Hello everyone. How are you? I'm so glad to finally be back. I did not light the candles because I have so many fans going on in the room that the flame will just be all over the place. So, uh, thanks you so much for all of the kind comments that you guys leave for me. You're so nice to me. My son, um, always, you know, just to show support, he turns on the video and he lets it play through, uh, so YouTube won't, won't, uh, t ding me on somebody leaving early, but he always reads your comments. He doesn't listen, <laughs> although he's into this stuff, but not enough to listen to the videos. Um, but yeah, he always talks about how great you guys are, so thank you so much for that. Um, I didn't go into everything that was happening, uh, aside from my sister's passing, but it was a lot of stuff with my mother, my poor mother. I mean, she's got Chiron on her moon and Saturn on her son. And besides losing her youngest child, like just a lot of stuff. And, um, I finally just, my body just was like, that's enough. <laughs> and I just got so worn down. I didn't know what was going on. A friend suggested that I see a doctor um, and have some blood work done. And sure enough, I was depleted. A lot of things were depleted. So two days ago, three days ago, it was the first time I woke up in months and felt like myself again. So I'm very happy to be here again, to have the energy uh, to be here and yeah, I hope that all of you are doing well. It is wow out there. Um, and you know, we've all got so many things happening. I know there were, there were fires. Was it floods in Spain or fires? Unfortunately, uh, we didn't, I, that was not on any of the news that I watched, but I did hear something about that on Facebook. Um, and then, you know, we had Lahaina here i know a lot of you live in hawaii a lot on a few of you on maui um and i just want you to know that we're all sending you love and support uh i was privileged to visit maui and stay in kanapali near lahaina it is it's hard to describe that place it's a magical place and I am just trusting that it's going to be rebuilt the way that it was so that those small businesses and the family owned little places there will continue to thrive. And I think all of us are, are supportive of that. So, um, yeah. And then we had, you know, two climate change, like the, that fire, then we had, you know, the, um, the hurricane <laughs> happening uh, in Southern California. Um, you know, like Metatron keeps saying, we're there now. We have arrived. Um, we've crossed the threshold and we're in the midst of the changing the changing planet, really. Um, so, yeah, we'll all just uh, hang in there with all of the changes going on. Um, I will put the post, I'll put the link in the comment box because I know a lot of you like, enjoy the uh, live meetings that we had a couple of years ago. And I'd like to encourage, you know, if you're looking for a way to do manifesting and you really want to be around kind, kind hearted people of, of like minds, uh, to join the Egeria Circle, the New Moon Manifesting Group. We do a reading and a healing. And I usually share more, um, not on YouTube, just because it's safer that way. Um, but anyway, you guys, I really miss you. And I think of you when I'm not doing this. I try not to feel bad about it, but I really couldn't. I just was at, I hit the wall and that was all I had was just taking care of Bailey and the other work that I have with session work. And yeah, so now I'm back to YouTube. I want to talk a little bit about, I did make a video for the new moon last week and I just had a feeling not to upload it. Um, I had mentioned Nostradamus in the video and then Nostradamus actually talked to me a couple days later uh, just for clarity. Um, so I know that that's why that video wasn't uploaded. He made predictions for 2023 and what he, I didn't know that, but what he was, what he's been emphasizing to me is that, you know, we used to be a consumer driven economy, the West. Okay. 
was a consumer driven economy. Now we're a shareholder driven economy and that does not work. It's not sustainable because not everyone is a shareholder. So, um, and I'm not going to go into like all of the, you know, I could go on about that, but the point is that we're set up for, um, he's saying significant change, Metatron. So, you know, we'll see how long this can be sustained because I don't see anything happening in a matter of, you know, a short amount of time. But, you know, it is, and that was kind of the man eats man kind of thing. You have to understand he worked with plant medicine the way that he has said it and that that can somehow be distorted if your consciousness is not in a good place. So if he, what he was going through uh, affected, um, what are you saying? Well, the interpretation of the messages is the way that he's putting it. So let's talk about, because the Venus star point happened on the 13th, and that is not an old teaching. This is a brand new thing um, that's kind of caught on. It happens every 19 months, the Venus star point. Um, I don't really find it significant, uh, but I want to let you know, uh, just for those of you that are following this, so the Venus makes the pentagram around the sun, right? You can look at any search engine, uh, Venus and the dance of the Venus and the dance around the sun or Venus and the dance with the sun, something like that. And you can watch a video of it. So when it comes to those points, if it's landing on something significant for you, like your sun or your Venus, um, you know, then it, it makes a difference. So I just want to let you know that in January of 2022, it started 18 cap. Then it moved this August to 20 degrees of Leo. Next, it will be March of 2025. It'll be two degrees of Aries. And then October of 2026, it will be zero degrees of Scorpio. And then um, oh, 17 degrees of Leo in August of 2027. So if those point if those degrees are all placements for you or you know a few of them are then that can make a difference but this this inferior in conjunction so when venus meets with the sun either she's facing the earth she's between the sun and the earth or she's on the other side of the earth facing with the sun uh, i mean she's still with the earth but you know what i'm saying so this was a, an, an inferior conjunction and the Sabian symbol for that degree is intoxicated chickens dizzily flapping their wings trying to fly. So that tells me, it kind of reminds you of the news these days. <laughs> so that just tells me, you know, he's saying like pedal to the metal, nose to the grindstone, um, just kind of like head down, moving forward, that there's just going to be a lot of, you know, stuff. And we've only got, what, 19 months of that left. And that is the morning star. She became the morning star. So if you want to know whether or not you have a morning star Venus or an evening star Venus, start at your ascendant. And if Venus comes before your sun, then you are a morning star Venus. If Venus comes after your sun, then you are an evening star Venus. And you can look up. There are so many articles about the differences between the morning and and evening, morning ev Venus, we associate more with Taurus, and evening, we associate more with Libra. Um, but I have Venus and Libra, and my Venus is a morning star. She tends to be a bit more feisty, I'll say that. But um, the evening star is more like just kind of glides, and um, yeah, it's just kind of more... Uh, doesn't get take things so personally as personally and if they do they can not show it kind of thing um but morning star venus tends to be more reactive so uh mercury went retrograde in our time so for central standard time it was like 3 3 25 a.m today um i'm making this on the 24th so venus is going she's actually now um, or sorry, Mercury, I was talking about. Mercury was 21 degrees of Virgo when he moved back, and he will move back 
to eight degrees of Virgo on the 6th of September, and then he will move forward. He will finish his shadow on August. No, that doesn't make sense. Um, it must be September 30th. Um, Venus is already now back to the degree, 12 degrees of Leo, where she will begin moving forward. She still has some minutes to tick back, but she's sitting there. So I just want to let you know that when the full moon comes, Venus will be, you know, stationed at that degree. Um, Uranus and Jupiter will also be stationed at that degree. And that is really significant because when you look at Venus and Jupiter, they are in the sign of Taurus. Venus is the one that looks like a funny number four. And uh, Uranus is the Star Wars fighter guy, the bad guy in Star Wars. Um, they're conjunct. These these are big guys. So they're, you know, what, five? No, they're like probably eight degrees apart. That's a conjunction when you talk about them. Jupiter expands everything that he's close to. Both of them have the energy of... Um, the Wheel of Fortune. It's funny because I heard Russian roulette. <laughs> but, yeah, it could be. Like, be careful out there. Um, but, you know, they both have the energy. And they're ruled by Venus because they're in Taurus. So it's significant that they're stationary. When planets are stationary, whether it's stationary direct or stationary retrograde, they have a big influence. So it's good because Venus and um, Jupiter are benefics. And mostly Jupiter, but also Venus is a benefic. And Uranus, you just don't know what you're going to get. But it is significant. When Metatron was talking to me about this video, he was emphasizing um, the, like, lucky draw. Like, lucky, uh, just, like, this is, this energy could really take off and take you anywhere. If you can, you know, focus and use it to your advantage and I, I mean, it's not that easy, right? Because Pluto is squaring the nodes of fate. So people are afraid about money. And that's just Pluto squaring the nodes. That doesn't mean that it's true. It also, the south node is coming up to Spica, the, the fixed star Spica. She falls in Libra. In the tropical zodiac, she falls at 23 degrees of Libra. So the south node is cozied right up there. Um, and so that could, that could maybe have something to do with it too, but Venus retrograde will bring that out, especially because Venus is answering to the sun and the sun is in Virgo and Virgo, we associate more with, um, having enough, not having a lot, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but this could be like change in fortune for, you know, if you can, you know, just tune out those, that the fear and turn it around. You know, it's just really the power of our minds. And if we're strong enough to turn change our minds about that. So the new or the full moon takes place in Pisces. It is seven degrees and twenty-five minutes of Pisces. Saturn is right there at three minute or three degrees and thirty-three minutes. So three three three. This happens in London at two thirty five PM on the thirty first. Sorry, a.m. on the 31st. And in Sydney, it's the 31st at 11.35 a.m. Central Standard Time, it will be the 30th at 8.35 p.m. This is a blue moon because we have 31 days in August and we had a full moon on the 1st of August. Um, and then Eris. So as this happens... Not by degree, not in, according to the tropical zodiac, but by declination. So the way that they are out there in the sky. Um, Eris is with Mars. Eris, her, they call her the goddess of discord. She really kind of shakes things up in order to bring change. And she stands up for the little guy. She wants things there to be fairness. And um, so Eris and Mars are together and they're opposing Mercury. So that can be where we like we can get so angry that we can't speak, you know, or we can just erupt. So I just want to tell that, say that to you, because when Jupiter is coming up to Uranus, they're both stationing, by the way, but 
while they're in this, you know, cozied up like this, and then Eris and Mars are opposing Mercury. Mercury is retrograde. Mercury is in charge of the sun right now. So this need, you know, we're gonna we're gonna need to be deep deep breaths, deep deep breaths, because otherwise our minds could just be. And especially on the day of this full moon, we may like have a hard time sleeping. So I know a lot of you, um, a lot of people have issues with that. My daughter does. So I just want to give you a heads up. But if you notice this pretty yellow line that's going from Jupiter back to that moon Saturn, that is sweet. That is a quintile. And quintiles are really about bringing, manifesting in practical ways on the planet. Um, and things coming to fruition. The Sabian symbol, because this is Neptune ruling, the sign of Pisces ruling this full moon, Neptune is at 27 degrees of Pisces. So the symbol is the harvest moon illumines a clear autumnal sky. So it is reaping rewards. And we think always with full moon, something comes to... It's like uh, something is, we give birth to something, something comes to fruition. You know, it could be knowledge that comes to you. If you have planets in the first half of Pisces, though, you know, don't be surprised. It's something unexpected, but, but really good, makes its way to you. And that doesn't have to be, it can happen a lot of times before the full moon or a little after. Um, you know, I was asking him, this I Pluto is on the descendant in this chart and he's trying there. You'll see Mars is at like two degrees uh, Virgo, Pallas Athena. So the midpoint of Pallas Athena and Mars are trying Pluto. Um, and then they're, you know, trying Algol in the tropical zodiac, the fixed star Algol, which is Medusa. It has to do with beheading. Um, I, I just can't, I don't know, I either this is a setup for a big ocean earth event or it's Japan um, releasing all of the nuclear water into the oceans. I mean, I can't believe that we just do that now and, I mean, it's just crazy to me. Uh, and they're like, oh, the atomic, I don't know what they are, what that organization is, the Atomic Safety Commission or whatever. Oh, they th they said that that's fine. Like you, it's always great when an industry regulates itself. <laughs> that makes me feel so much better about it. Um, so you know, we'll just send love there and hope for the best, right? Uh, but that could be what that is, um, because Pluto is plutonium, and then Ceres is on Spica. Ceres is so Spica in the tropical zodiac is at twenty three Libra, but she is in the constellation of Virgo. Ceres also is at home in Virgo, so another heads up to a reward coming in and reaping a bountiful harvest. And Ceres is in a harmonious trine to Vesta and Gemini ruled by that Mercury. So if something was missing, if something was lost, if something was taken, you know, the, it may be impossible for it to come back the way, like from who took it or the way that it went, but you can ask for that to come back in a different way. As long as we aren't bitter about what happened to it in the first place, that will come back. I mean, that I've done that myself. Um, and then the vertex. So the vertex, there is an asteroid named vertex. There's a vertex, a uh, fixed star named vertex, but this is just a point in the sky. And the vertex is at the great attractor in the center of Sagittarius. So ruled by that Jupiter. So it looks like it looks really good. It's just fear, you know, that could get in our way with manifesting something new right now. It's really not, you know, um, Manly Hall said a wise man is ruled by or a foolish man is ruled by their planets. A wise man rules the planet. So just reach for like what is good. You know, this Jupiter Uranus connection um, in that quintile to the full moon, the full moon is with Saturn. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you feel a little bit, if things are heavy that day, let it, you know, have a release, uh, good energy for doing that. Um, what else? Pluto is in a trine with that palace Mars connection. So that is a lot of energy to go forward. 
uh, Venus, I already talked about that. So, oh yeah, and then the 11th house, where in the universal chart, Jupiter and Uranus are together. A lot of the older teachings call, describe the 11th house as unexpected gifts and blessings from the universe, so just claim that. Um, and then Venus and Chiron are parallel with the sun. So that's also fantastic, because Chiron isn't just about the wound. Chiron was a teacher, he's very wise. And he gives great ins inspiration. Um, and I just want to touch on some other things that he mentioned in the video to make sure that I got everything covered from last week's video. Um, yeah, he was saying that... Okay. So he said, he said to be playing so hard right now and having such a great time enjoying yourself that you don't even notice that there is any chaos or back chatter or, or loud things happening. Um, and that we feel unsettled because we can feel that there are big changes coming. He did not expound on that, but that is what he said. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got. Um, I think I was talking really fast, wasn't I? Anyway, you guys, I'm so happy to be back with you. And every time that I do this, I want to, you know, do another one the next day. Oh, I want to mention this, too. Um, yeah, he just said, like, take a lot of time and consideration making big decisions right now. And then watch out for corruption and hidden agendas. Um, long anticipated fortuitous outcomes on the horizon. Blessings in disguise. And then he said accepting the past. So... If it was something that happened that we still are, like, you know, about, uh, just accepting it as a blessing in disguise, then the blessing can come through. And then, you know, right now, what's most important is maintaining emotional equilibrium. And that, I think, is why the deep breathing that he mentioned, too. So, anyway, guys, I, I will be back. Um, I'm going to try to come back next week and, for sure, two weeks from now. If you want to join the new moon group, it's 22, 22, and it's worth it. Um, anytime we invest in ourselves, not, I'm not just saying like with me, but anytime you invest in yourself in that way, it comes back to you. It works out. And um, yeah, so I miss you guys, and I'm glad that I made it back here. Uh, thanks to you guys for checking on me, everybody who has left comments. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's easier to upload on Instagram. It's faster to record for Instagram. And um, so, yeah, if you want to follow me there, it's astro underscore Jenny 111. So anyway, guys, I'm sending you so much love. I appreciate you so much. And I can feel all of your good juju. I'm sending it right back to all of you. Take care. And I will see you shortly. Bye-bye.